is End Screen Noise. My name is Colin Dixon, founder and chief analyst at End Screen Media, and today is August 7th, 2015. It's been a very difficult Q2 for Dish Network. The company says it lost 81,000 subscribers in Q1 to finish at 13.9 million in total. And they are now down 121,000 versus Q2 in 2014. This led Charlie Ergen, who is head of Dish, to ruminate that we are in a mature to declining kind of linear TV business. And it certainly looks like that from Dish's perspective, at least. But the company's not standing still. It launched Sling TV, which is its OTT direct-to-consumer service online, with 20 channels, 21 channels for just $20, uh, plus a bunch of $5 add-on packs. And we actually got some information on that from Roger Lynch, who is CEO of Sling TV. And he says the company had 169,000 subscribers at the end of Q1. No update for Q2 though. So the question is, is Sling actually compensating for the losses that we are seeing in this quote mature and declining dish satellite business? Well, the answer there is sort of. Certainly from the perspective of subscribers, the 169,000 are adding on to the total number of DISH subscribers. Uh, so actually losses would have been a lot worse without the Sling TV business. But is it making the money? Well, the dynamics of the two businesses are very different. Charlie Ergen says, if you bring a person on Sling on the Sling side, of course your SAC, which is uh, subscriber acquisition cost, is materially less. Your ARPU, average revenue per unit, is also less, but the value is about the same. And boy, is he right about SAC subscriber acquisition cost being less in Sling TV. A sack for Dish is about $800, uh, but for Sling is just $10 or $20, something in that range. They don't, they don't start, state it specifically. Uh, but what Charlie Ergen is saying is the margin on the bundle is probably less too, but since the costs involved in, in acquiring that subscriber are much less, uh, it looks like it could be adding about the same amount of profit to the company. So is Sling TV cannibalizing Dish subscribers? Well, the answer is probably not, at least to according to Roger Lynch. Roger, Roger Lynch says that their primary audience comes from three pools. Pool one is called Nevers, those people that have never had pay TV. Uh, they're picking up Sling TV. That's the biggest pool, he says. Somewhat smaller is Cord Cutters, those people that have cut the cord sometime in the last four years. And at the very bottom is Supplementers, those people that are taking Sling TV in addition to a pay television subscription that they may already have. Uh, the question is, does this leave room for growth for Dish in the OTT market? Well, to get an idea of that, we have to go back to INTX in Chicago earlier this year, where I moderated a panel with Roger Lynch, uh, and, among others. And one of the things he said on that panel was that he recognized that Sling TV was not a complete television solution online. It provides the live TV part. So what that means is he's expecting others to top up the other bits that he's not doing. Uh, so it could be that Dish just decides to launch more services to actually slot into those missing pieces of Sling. Uh, and they could end up with a lot of incremental revenue. Now, right now, what's happening is those are getting topped up with other services like, for example, HBO Now. And uh, it, it looks like uh, Time Warner is very, very pleased with HBO Now's performance so far. Both CEO uh, Richard Pe Pepler uh, and Jeff Bukes, who's head of Time Warner, are very happy. Richard Bukes, uh, Jeff Bukes rather, said that uh, Time Warner is, is very happy. He says we're extremely pleased with how well uh, HBO Now has been received. Now, how well? They're not exactly saying. They're certainly not saying how many subscribers they have, but they did give some details. They said that um, with many of the 30-day free trial uh, people still on the books, the company is not making a profit yet. But T Time Warner CFO Howard Averill was 
upbeat about that. He said though they didn't expect to make a profit with HBO Now through the end of the year, he did expect it to end up being a very profitable business. Um, but is it cannibalizing cable? Are people getting rid of HBO on cable and picking it up online through HBO Now? Well, the answer, at least according to Richard Plepler, is a very definite no. He says, we've seen less than 1% of HBO people leave the bundle to go to get HBO now, uh, according to him. But I'm not sure that that's exactly accurate. And the reason is, when you look at Time Warner's results for this quarter, they actually did pretty well, 8% revenue gain. All of the business inside of Time Warner actually made money and did very, very well, except HBO, which dragged down uh, that gain. Uh, it could have been a lot higher if HBO had performed better. Now, you could say that that was because there were costs incurred because of the launch of HBO Now, which surely there were but it probably doesn't account for all of those losses. So I think that there is very definitely uh, a core group of people that are leaving cable, Cable's HBO for the online version. Uh, uh, but I guess we'll have to wait and see until they make a specific announcement about how many subscribers HBO now has. Uh, and once they do, you can bet we'll be reporting it here on End Screen Noise. We'll see you again next time.